So, uh, so let's do this properly. So hi everyone, my name is Yorkie. I'm going to be running Renko Sagibi's Longest Day as long as the person watching this, hello, uh, accepts it into the event. Uh, this is a very weird game from Suda51 and Yohei Katuoka, uh, the person behind Tokyo Jungle. Uh, and whilst we won't be seeing some of the madness, we'll be seeing maybe a tiny little bit of the madness of the game. So we're just going to go straight in and we'll explain it as much as we can as we go on. So, let's hit my start button. It should have happened a couple of seconds ago, but that's fine. So, three, two, one, go. So, we're going to be skipping all of the cutscenes, so you're not going to sit through a six and a half minute cutscene to start the game, where we find out about who Ranko is, what she's doing, and why she's in the world. So I'll explain it. Basically, she's a high school girl that is also a contract killer, who's out to avenge her mother's death, and she wants to kill her father. Uh, yeah, that, if that sounds weird, just just remember, Suda51. That's all you need to know. One of my favourite comments about this game is that I was explaining everything, and someone in chat said, mention Suda51. Everything makes sense. That is literally, you know, the best way to think about this game. Suda51 is known for his weird games, in the sense of weird um, stories and weird basically everything. But we're going to be going through the first three levels. It's going to teach us how to play the game because it, it doesn't have any way of understanding that we've already been in the game many, 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 many times. But we're playing as Ranko, she's got a violin. Uh, the violin is not important just at the moment, except for the fact that he's both obviously killing enemies with it. But uh, the best way to sort of describe this game in my eyes is that it's the Weeb Sonic. You play as a, a, an anime girl uh, instead of Sonic, and you're out to, you know, effectively make your way to the right. So we're going to learn how to hover. We've already done it once or twice, so that's fine killing these little enemies and also this is the the legion that's chasing us we're gonna learn to shoot them using our l1 button they will be a pain on one or two levels hopefully they won't be but we'll we'll, we'll, we'll shoot them as much as we can you'll see our little ammo counter down in the bottom left there we kind of want to keep it above two segments or two segments as much as we can it gives us a bit of leeway if we don't uh, attack the legion correctly or they come close twice because they're very quick uh, and they will occasionally catch up to you very very quickly if you bonk. We don't want to be bonking against things like we just did so we'll keep going. So you also see that we're creating chains here. Chains help in the sense that they will clear off enemies that are further along the path. There are a few situations where this is very key and not getting one is a bit of a pain. Like there, you'll see that it killed all of those little birds in front of us. And that bird there killed the bird in front of it, and so on and so forth. There are a few times where we don't want to kill things to create a chain because it can be slower, because you can get hit or the chain doesn't kill the enemies quick enough. But we will hopefully just go past them as well. Again, we're choosing the higher path here as much as we can. Uh, because it is generally the quickest. We're going to be coming to the end of the first level soon. And I notice that we've not had the, the Legion catch up to us at all yet, which is good. And you'll notice that we're invincible when we're charging, but when we run through a speed pad, uh, we're invincible. Uh, when we slide, we're invincible. When we're gliding, we're kind of invincible. And we're just going to keep going. Uh, thankfully, there's no cutscenes for a bit, so we're okay. Just going to go straight on to level number two. There are ten stages, and they fly through pretty quickly. But uh, one thing to note is that you will be seeing a few of Ranko's friends throughout the stages. People that will get introduced in the opening cutscene, uh, Moiko and Kirara. And they'll be in various states of, uh, well, everything, I guess. But here's the slide we've just learned the chain it creates. And you'll see there that we outran that little bolt of lightning that was coming through. Uh, just because, well, we're faster than it. It's literally the reason. And we're introduced to wall springs here. 
which are little ones that we basically want to not get caught from them. This is where understanding that going up in a stage is the better path because you don't have to do the wall springs which are very very slow. Okay, we're gonna go up here. Oh, we missed that, that's fine. It's not like every enemy you need to kill. It's only some. It's the only the ones that gain your way. We're going to be trying avoiding them as much as we can. Oh, we didn't do that very well. That was very good. So, welcome to the downward path. And you'll see here, this is why it's a tiny bit slower. Because you have to then climb back up. This, this stage here is one of the ones that has quite a big, big uh, gap in it down here, which is to go up here. And you see we're going past all these. We're actually slightly ahead of the chain. That's fine. Those enemies don't actually attack us, so we can ignore them as the chain finally catches up with them. We're at the end of the level. That's stage two. You notice that we're only six minutes in and we're already past the set, the first le the first two levels uh, in the all cutscenes run, uh, which I've also submitted. Hopefully, uh, we're quite a bit behind at this point. But to, uh, we're on stage three. We're slowly making our way to Sugimi Ranko's hotel. Well, not her hotel, I guess. Her father's hotel. Because the end goal of the game is obviously to, you know, to, to get revenge. We're in the vault. Get away. I'm going to learn how to basically deflect enemy fire. Which is to just do an attack as it's coming at you. Okay. Tiny bit slow to get that jump. Again, that's where sort of attacking is not always the quickest thing. We just want to jump over those. I want to go up here. Get the boost pad, and then we want to jump. Get a nice little. And I always do this. We should slide there, but I always forget. It saves a bit of time to do that, but we're going to keep going. And we're coming, this stage is the first set with encounters where you've got to kill so many enemies. Which we'll be seeing towards the end of the level. And again, that's the castle we've already unlocked. Cool. That's good. But yeah, we're turning everything into very bright confetti at the moment. That's fine. You can only go down there anyway. It's one of the only areas where we don't go up. We're in the vault, so welcome to the first area where we've got to kill so many enemies. And the first stage where we use the rightward facing attack of the gun. Because the violin, although we use it to shoot back the legion, can be used to clear enemies off screen as well. Uh, it's not very useful in a lot of situations. Uh, but there are one or two locations where it's it's best to or best to use it. So we're going to be on to stage four now, which is the onwards towards the hotel.
So we're in the subway. No new tricks to learn here. This is the first stage where we've got to face put it all together ourselves. So this is the only one that we don't want to attack. That killing that big bomb up there is actually slower than than not. Uh, because he takes quite a while to send his charge across to cause damage to other things. Nice big bomb there as we drop in. You'll see here we're actually going to outrun the map. We're going to come up to the first area where we... Oh, that's good. So that would be normally an area where I would use the gun to kill the, the ones on the left. But because of how quickly we came in and jumped, we were able to just wipe out the room pretty quickly. If only those two on the Yeah, Again, we're going to slide down here. Kill him. And we're going to go down because we fell. Going up there with, you know, staying on top of the quicker path there, that's fine. And again, everything turns into very bright confetti on the screen. It's a really, very beautiful game to look at. Despite everything in the background being pretty basic and pretty plain, it's very colourful and very nice to actually look at. So we actually got a new high score there. So that's our new fastest time for that particular stage. Hoping I don't have to time this run for leaderboards. Uh, but uh, we're going to be in the hotel now. Uh, which is the site of our first actual job, I guess. As a contract killer, we're actually out to kill a specific person at the moment. And it just so happens that we're using our hotel because they're across the road from it. I say across the road very loosely. Okay, thank you again. <laughs> oh, she doesn't always, uh, let's say, uh, accept inputs. Uh, that's fine. We can, again, like, like I say, keep going up. I'm gonna jump over him because even jumping over him counts as a boost to do the other ones. So, we're going to be coming up to the first boss as well. Or well, the first boss is, I guess, in this game. In a second or two. Fortunately, let's just put it this way, our uh, contract killing doesn't go very well. And welcome to the another room where we use... Hi, please. There we go. Let me use our gun just in case we get caught up. But that would be another area where we would try and use the gun. And clear off that top boss enemy and the bottom bosses, or the, the, the bottom bombs, because it helps clear that screen a lot sooner. So we're unfortunately going to skip this cutscene. Uh, our violin is a sniper pistol. Unfortunately, this cutscene does seem to take some time to load sometimes. But if we're patient, it will. 
It will load. There we go. Uh, but now we've done the job, and night and day are here to ruin, ruin it for us, basically. They're, they're here to, to kind of put a stop to us by locking us in a silo. Not sure how we get there, but we, we end up in a silo, and we're, you know, trying to avoid it. And this is one of the stages where platforming is very, very important, and having the correct path and doing the prep movements are very key. Because basically night and day will spawn at certain platforms throughout this area. And we kind of want to just get there to hit them as quickly as we can. So we want him to come here, that's fine. So night is almost dead. He will appear up here, hopefully on this side. Oh, that's the bag slide. That's the peak path. There we go. So we almost died there at the end. Don't worry about it. We got the final kill in. We got the final kill. The final attack. Not sure how the game would, would play with that if we'd landed in the grinder at the bottom, but don't worry, we, we don't normally do that. Normally we land on the same platform as him. But uh, yeah, they're dead, or they're not dead, because they're zombies. Now we're meeting Moiko, who is a magical girl with a sword who cuts their heads off in the cutscene that we just skipped. Uh, we also meet her brother, uh, a gentleman called Ren, who is an interesting character of his own. He is a Sentai fighter who has a bike. And this is the first of two stages where we need to be very, very wary of our ammo count because the Legion here are very, very quick. So when we see the warning symbol there, pretty much, or just before, we want to be fighting them because that will allow us to stay off of their radar. Actually, oh, it's fine, we're gonna do that. We've got two, so... We kinda wanna stay, like all previous levels beforehand, we want to be staying with at least two chain, or two ammo, so that if we do get caught up near the end, we can shoot them back. And also, if they do decide to catch up with us pretty soon, Uh, we can bat them off without worrying too much about having uh, not enough ammo. So there is a level of, like, um, at least an amount that we can sort of have them at without worrying too much. I'm not going to try and be uh, all swaggy here and try and get them, you know, like that and be close. If we have the ammo, we're going to we're going to be fighting them off because uh, it's going to be. Great. Uh, and easier and avoiding a death, uh, which we don't want. Uh, so we're also here staying on the upper paths as much as we can. Because again, in here there is uh, death and slowness on the bottom paths. Uh, because there are pits that you can fall into that will kill you instantly. But that is the end of the level. Now, unfortunately, Ren is uh, going to take a death here. And we're going to basically trigger the, the end of the world. Oh, so unfortunately, uh, Kirara from earlier on uh, has fallen out of the window. Uh, and she is now a dragon because your best friends change into dragons when they're angry and have their father killed. Yes, that is the person who we just killed previously in our little contract killing was her father. So, if you ever play this game, there is a safe spot up here. Uh, for the majority of it, you can basically just kind of just sit up there and be happy. 
these pink bombs here will follow you up until you get a kill on one of her body parts, and then they will completely forget about you. They're tracking to an extent, but we don't care after we've broken the wings or legs or tail. So, as you can see, staying up there in that top left corner is a nice safe spot. So, I'm also going to give a very early warning to everyone here that there's going to be a loud noise once we've beaten this boss. Uh, so, if you are wearing headphones, do uh, be aware. We're going to try and take out the legs first or the tail. Doesn't really matter which. Uh, as long as you take out one of them. No worries, please. There we go. Gonna go for a nice little safe spot in the top left corner again. Do a little dive and we don't care, we dodge it. So, we're going to go back down here and try and swagger this out a little bit. By being as close to her tail as possible. So we can get as many shots in. There we go. There's only one body part left that we need to worry about and that's her head. And as you can imagine, it's the most dangerous part of her body. So we're going to try and get into the rough area where she will be with her head. Hopefully she won't use her beam attacks. She is instantly going to use a beam attack. Brilliant. But we're going to try and... We're not too worried about getting attacked there. As long as we can... There we go. Get enough bullets on her head. A loud noise. Three, two, one. Sorry for everyone with headphones. So, this is now the cutscene where Ren unfortunately takes death and we unlock the gates of hell. Yes, he turns into that. He has a very cool little transformation going on. That is our sister who we skipped there. Uh, that's 50 years in the future. Uh, don't worry, we'll be seeing her again uh, for, you know, a couple of seconds or two. So, we're on to the final two stages here. And this la second to last, well, they're both pretty terrible stages. Uh in the grand scheme of things. We're going to introduce a new character! I wonder Mount Fuji if you didn't already know. So, this is Pom Pom. If you don't know Yohei Kataoka, he has a thing for putting Pomeranians in his games. Tokyo Jungle has a Pomeranian on the front cover. Uh, this Pomeranian is not so nice. Uh, yes. Uh, Pom Pom is going to be chasing us throughout this stage, and he is very, very angry at us. So much like the bike stage, we're going to try and keep our sort of ammo count as above two as possible, because he will try and bite us, and we don't want that. If we need to, we will pet him, uh, but it won't be what you think. Uh, we'll be using our, our gun to pet him, and he won't like that, but... Unfortunately, it's kind of what we'll have to do. So we're going to do it there, just to get us a bit of leeway before we get to this boost pad. So he really wants to bite us, and we, we really don't want that. So thankfully, we've got all these boost pads to kind of help us get away from him. He's very nice in the sense that he will kind of like sit at the walls when we climb up them, which is very, very nice of him, but we uh, obviously don't want him to, to bite us. So say hello, Pom Pom, because uh, we're going to be shooting you again in a second. So look at him down there. If we stayed down, if we stayed climbing that wall, he would stay down there forever. So we're going to shoot you again, Pom Pom. Sorry about that. Because I don't want to get caught here. So we're building up our nice little ammo account here. I 
we're almost at the end. There we go. So we're going through the gate that we unlocked in the cutscene we didn't see. And we also missed a new character called Kaido, who we meet only this once. He never returns. Doesn't die as far as I know, but he certainly doesn't survive. So we're on to the final boss. Uh, the final boss is a pain. Uh, it is our father, of course, uh, who is a luchador. Uh, we meet him earlier on in the story. We don't, unfortunately, you know, in this particular run. But uh, yeah, we now change the game entirely. So every previous one was platforming. This has platforming, but we also have to kind of demask him. This is where runs go to die. There's a specific move we want our father to do, which is a belly flop attack. Uh, and trying to bait it out him can be a bit of a pain. Okay, we got it. Oh no, we died! We should have stayed to the left. That's fine. That's fine though. Come on. There we go. So that's fine as well. So, with his attacks, we kind of want to avoid him as much as we can. Uh, mainly because he has more health than us. But he spans into three people here. And we kind of want to just attack this one. Okay. Oh, he's... Right, that's fine. We've, we've killed all his clones now. So... This makes this a bit easier. Go. Get the dodge in. So he will now basically introduce our sister into the fight. Also notice Pom Pom. He's he's here watching us, giving us support. Obviously not too impressed that we, we shot him several times, but that's fine. But now our sister is gonna be amazingly useful here. And she's gonna basically Come on, do you do you silly attack? There we go. So the final two areas, I guess, are he's gonna do a range of belly flops with some clones. So we just need to kind of keep an eye out for which one he is. Uh, so we know he's green, so we need to know where green is in the list, and he's all the way over here. So we're just gonna go and attack him. So if he attacks us, that's fine. Okay. Kind of got caught by our sister here. So we need Pink to come down and do an attack. Come on, Pink. Come on, Pink. So, that's okay. We can... Okay! That is pretty good. Time is coming up when the black screen comes to... almost there and that is time so yeah very very short game very very fun very very interesting very good music made by a very weird person and just let the cutscene play out just obviously at this point in the run i would uh, say thanks to everyone that's like supported me uh throughout the game we're here with our sister obviously uh so thanks to everyone that's like supported me speed running thanks for having me in the event uh, thanks for being awesome chat, everyone. Thank you. Um, but we're going to unfortunately skip this. Unfortunately, we end up like strangling our sister. Uh, the game doesn't end really here. Uh, it's kind of like it ends as having been all a dream. Uh, and our sister comes back from being killed on there. But... Uh, yeah, that is the uh, that is the any percent run. So thanks for watching, person who I'm submitting this through to. If you let me into the event, thank you for more.